<laughs> Michael gets me back. We're both from Cleveland, Ohio. Michael and I, born and raised. <laughs> oh, God. oh yeah, no, I not the Browns. About that one. How about the Cavs and the Indians? Well, <laughs> um, so you were the director of Let Your Backbone Slide. I was, and that was, you know, arguably one of the first rap videos. Yeah, I mean, it brought hip hop culture to Canada. I was very, very proud of that, and very proud of my relationship with Wes, because uh, we ended up doing seven videos together. Wow! And By the way, Danny, oh, that video was awesome. Yeah, really awesome. Yeah. Good to see you again, man. Wow. I did. I like. I like the one with the limo, though. <laughs> Um, let's let's uh, take a look at the at a video that we all probably know. It's let let your backbone slide, and uh, then we'll talk a bit more. One of my favorite introductions to any song. This is a throwdown, a showdown. There we go. I think most of us know that one. I think most of us know that video and that song, obviously. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the process, uh, how you met, how that came about? Well, um, as Daniel was talking about, uh, I was producing Electric Circus at the time. And uh, it was wonderful because all these, these uh, young, talented people in Toronto, whether they were from the dance community or the hip-hop community, uh, would, would come into our office and give us uh, tapes. <clears throat> so Wes was no different. This young kid from Scarborough uh, came into our office one day and gave me a... Uh, it was a video, and the video was called I'm Showing You. And... Wes was 19 years old at the time, and uh, he, he understood image, and he understood marketing, and, you know, the tuxedo was there, and the girls with the, the French horns, and uh, I said, got to get this guy on. He came on the show, did one show. His uh, manager was Farley Flex, Farley Friedel, and um, I, I, he blew everybody away, so I wanted him on for another show. Uh, he came on a second time, and the second time he was there, Stevie B was on, also on the show. How many people remember Stevie B? Yeah, an R&B guy from Florida. <clears throat> Stevie, like all of us, fell in love with Maestro. He immediately called his record company in New York and said, you got to hire this guy, uh, or you got to sign this guy. Sorry, you have to sign this guy. And next thing you know, because of Wes's appearances on Electric Circus, he got signed at LMR. Well, Farley and Wes were very loyal people, uh, so they, they knew I, I had directed one video before that, and it was shot right here in the Great Hall. Tim Hamilton's first video was shot right here. It was upstairs, and it was called Out of My House Roach by the Shuffle Demons. And uh, it was very successful, won a Casby Award that year. And based on that, they said, we want you to direct our video because uh, it was because of you that we got this. So we put together uh, a group of people. Paul Sarasi, I don't know if, uh, Paul Sarasi was our cinematographer who went on to do most of Adam McGowan's movies and was even nomina nominated for an Academy Award uh, for cinematography. And Kurt Swinghammer did all the artwork. Uh, and we put together this group of people. None of us really knew what we were doing. And uh, Wes uh, actually did the storyboards by himself. He knew exactly what he wanted. He wrote them out. We would have lunch meetings. He'd write them out on napkins, on note paper. And uh, we pieced it together. And that was it. I, I directed it, and I also did, I edited it analog style. Wow. Yeah. Um, and it was shot, obviously, on film. What was the production, the production, uh, what can you say about the production of it? It was shot on 35 millimeter film, and the only, uh, because I was a television guy, so the only um, experience I had with film was when we shot here, Out of My House Roach, on 16 millimeter film, and I depended, and I leaned on Paul Sarasi a lot for the technical stuff. Uh, this one was shot on 35 millimeter film, 
and it was a process. We, we were there for two days. This was shot on a church on DuPont and Davenport, right here in Toronto, which burned down about a month after we, <laughs> we, we shot the video. Um, okay, so it was shot 35 millimeter. Uh, so that wasn't a nightclub? No, everybody thinks it was a nightclub. I'm going to set the record straight. It was shot in a church, an abandoned church. And I think we got it for 350 bucks for nice. a day. So we spent $700. So that first scene with, with, uh, with Paul Sarasi and the crane which coming down and Wes on the organ, that was the actual church organ. Sweet. Uh, yeah. And that first shot uh, down the stairs, where was that? That, that, was that same thing. They, they, they were walking down the stairs. And once again, Wes uh, pretty much storyboarded. This is a 19-year-old kid from Scarborough whose story, he, he, he knew the images he wanted, you know. And uh, he almost had a different image for every, uh, for every lyric. And uh, the rest of them that we, he, he didn't have, he trusted me. He said, you fill it in. Nice. And I saw, was there the track, the camera track? In that, that shot? That's correct. Um, that was my idea. We had a, a dolly track uh, going around the dancers, and I figured, who cares if we expose it, you know, with the wide shot. Uh, the tight shots, and th these dancers were amazing. I mean, for me, it was, you know, my teachers in hip-hop were Michael Williams, of course, but also uh, Wes, Mishy Me, uh, King Lou, and Q from the Dream Warriors, who I did a lot of work with. You know, these were people who were probably five or six years younger than me. And we were all in our 20s when we did this. We had no idea what we were doing. And, you know, all of them, Mishy, uh, Wes, and uh, Michael, and um, King Lou, their, their thing to me was, we know you're a fan of hip-hop, but we really want you to understand it before we're going to take you into our community and let you um, get these images out to the world. Uh, but I'm very proud of the fact that, you know, drop the needle, uh, let your backbone slide, were really the world's first glimpses into Toronto hip-hop culture. And, and, and people knew that we had our own culture. And that video, to me, stood up to anything that was happening from the States. Well, and I've, I've heard people reference that as one of the first successful hip-hop videos, too. So that wasn't just successful Canadian ones. That was all over did you guys know that when, when that was happening, that people would uh, pay attention? That's a great question. And I have to say, uh, when we did the po I, I, I edited, I produced, directed, and edited this thing myself. Uh, and post-production was handled by myself and David Kynes. And I don't know if you know David Kynes' name, but David eventually took over Much Music from Denise Dahlman. He ran Much Music. Uh, but at that point, he was uh, an editor for the New Music, and we were in this place called Hutchum. So in those days, with the analog editing, I had to have this burned-in time code. So every shot, I had to type in the first and last time code of every shot. And there was a lot of editing in that. So I had to hand it over to David on a, 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 a typed page, and then David would have to take all those numbers and retype them into this, this post-production console. So once he did that, we ordered a pizza, and we're eating this pizza, and we're watching the, the, the monitor going, oh my goodness, we, we have something here. You could feel it. You could feel that energy that, you know, and it, 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 it really changed. Uh, it, it, very proud of it because it changed pop culture in Canada. We, we had an impact on pop culture in Canada. For the first time, urban, uh, urban culture in Toronto was being aired across Canada and across the world. So that was uh, being edited in-house at Much Music? No, it had nothing to do with Much Music. I was working at, at EC at the time, Electric Circus. I was producing that. I created that show. Um, but this was done totally as a side project. And um, it, 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 it's one of those things when you're producing independently. And by the way, I'm glad Michael brought up Video Fact, and I'm glad you brought up Video Fact, because it's a, it's a crying shame that Bell Media let it go. Uh, it, it's horrible. It, 
it started my career. Tim Hamilton would probably be able to tell you I think, it, I think it helped pretty much all of us. Yeah, here. everybody here. It, it, it helped so many careers. Uh, and they also got rid of Bravo Fact at the same time. And I got a lot of Bravo Fact grants as well. And there's nothing now to replace it. Nothing. So young people who are coming up through the ranks, through Ryerson, through Humber College, um, now come to a situation where they... They can't, and, and it wasn't even about the money uh, for me as a, a music video producer, director. It was more about uh, doing projects that, that increased your profile as a director. You know, Tim and, my, and me, we, we've both moved on to longer form stuff. Me in, uh, in, in the documentary world, Tim in, in the um, scripted world, but we wouldn't be here without much fact, and it's gone. It's just gone. There's, it's horrible. And I think um, it, it, in days gone by, the, the budgets for much fact and video fact were larger, but even in the last while when the budgets were smaller, even that small amount of money uh, really helped. Well said. You're absolutely right. Yeah, it was like even if it was five or six or seven thousand dollars, now that cameras are more affordable and editing can be done at home, you could you know, it was more like a $20,000 grant like 10 years ago. So the fact that these realistically small grants are gone, um, I think symbolically has hurt. It sucks. <clears throat> and I have to say that, uh, you know, the, the, the Shuffle Demons and then and this Maestro video I did, the, now the, Maestro, the Shuffle Demons was a video fact. Maestro was done by LMR, these two guys, Herb and Larry Molas, these two guys in New York, a father, son, and I don't know how many of you have ever done a project, like a film project, where you have to send it to somebody for notes. You usually get 8,000 pages of notes. <laughs> the, the only notes I ever got from the Molases were, this is great, where do we send the check? <laughs> and it was, it, was, it was wonderful to work with them, and it was, you know, this video, uh, grew into a, 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 you know, a 30 year relationship with my man Wes. Uh, we did Drop the Needle, which was recently named as one of the most important um, uh, thing, uh, the important uh, moving picture projects by TIFF. Uh, Wes and I were just uh, honored at TIFF uh, this year for that. Uh, and um, I ended up doing seven music videos with Wes. None of it would have happened without uh, showcasing my talents on video fact, with video fact. What a downer. What yeah. a downer. <laughs> oh, by the way, I also directed um, uh, my definition by the, the Dream Warriors in this building. That was so much in fun. This, in this room? Right in this room. Like, Out of My House Roach was done upstairs, but we did it right here. Did it, it didn't look this way, though. No, it didn't look this way. This is, it looks pretty cool now, but uh, King Lou was one of my best teachers. I ended up doing two videos with the Dream Warriors, one here called My Definition and one in St. Kitts. We, we were in St. Kitts for 10 days shooting another video called Ludi. Um, but as I said, Wes and, and Mishy, uh, Mishy Me, I, who I did Jamaica Funk with, which was also shot here, <laughs> uh, were my teachers, but King Lou was the most... Uh, Ernest, because he really didn't want me to direct a video without understanding every lyric, and he'd sit down with me, and we'd go through every all, all the lyrics, and he said, "You know, this means bags of mostly water." And I said, "No, I don't know what that means." He goes, "Humans, we're bags of mostly water," and uh, so we'd go line by line, and he'd want to make sure that I understood everything. Whereas Wes was uh, also my teacher, but he was more uh, involved with, with image, saying, this is how I want it to be. I've got these images for you. You fill in the blanks. Lou was more, this is what I want. Mishy was more um, uh, big picture. And she would say two or three things. For Jamaica Funk, she would say, I want images of strong women. Images of strong women. So I hired Fiona Smythe, who was an underground uh, cartoonist at the time, and uh, she did these like 13, 14 foot uh, cartoons of strong women. Yeah. So Jamaica Funk was all about 
in, in, about women taking over from men, which we'd be a better world if women rightfully take over so, from men right now. So. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm going to, uh, Remy, we're going to ask, uh, d does anyone have a question? You, I can't see anything, so Remy, you've got the eyes. Any obvious questions for this gentleman? Like how many uh, music videos, how many videos did you do in this building? Uh, about four or five. I did, I, I produced and directed about 80 videos back in the day. Uh, and probably five or six of them were, were done in this building, and I have so many cool memories from this building. Don't see any questions. You, you've satiated all these people here. I don't know what that's like. <laughs> well, I would like to say thanks to you, and thanks to Remy for putting this on, and thanks for, you know, um, Remembering that this art form. I it, think it, everyone remembers this art form, and yeah. we all like we've celebrated it. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm gonna have another bone shaker. Thank you, Joel.